What the hell you think you're doing barging in on us like this? In case you've forgotten, this is my house, and I will not tolerate such common behavior underneath my roof. Well, that'd carry a lot more weight coming from you if you hadn't used the whole damn place as your own personal brothel the entire time you were married to my mother. Whitney, can you cover yourself up, please? I can't believe a daughter of mine would behave like this, practically having sex in public. Well, I don't know why you can't believe it, because when you were my age, you were practically having sex on the stage at the Blue Note every single night. So you're in no position to judge anything I do, oh, okay? You know, maybe she isn't, but I am. Damn it, Whitney, we just broke up and you already had sex with Fox. What, what kind of woman are you? Sarah, I'm so happy. And after we lost Sarah, I never thought I could be happy again. And then the doctor told me I couldn't have any more children. But now, before we know it, Teresa is going to give birth to our two beautiful twins. And against all odds, you and I are finally going to be parents. And you're happy now, right? And madly in love with my husband. Mm. Mm. Yes, that's me. Yes, you better believe it. <laughs> mm. oh, I'm finally getting everything I ever wanted. Mm. Oh. oh, God. Oh, God, this can't be happening. Oh, please don't let anything go wrong with this pregnancy. These babies have to be all right. They just have to be... Alistair Crane is a horrible, despicable man who, for some unknown reason, is intent on destroying this family. So whatever he told you, Paloma, it's lies. You can't trust him? Maybe not. But I can't trust you either. How can you say that, mi niña? I'm your mother. And you're also the one who sent me away to live in Mexico. The one who abandoned me. Paloma, I, I didn't abandon you. I, I sent you to live with my sister, your Tia Maria, so that you can have the life that I couldn't give you. If you really loved me, Mama, you would have found a way to keep me. But you didn't. You're so wrong, Paloma. I have loved you since before you were born, and I have never stopped loving you. Please don't give in to Alistair Crane's lies. He hates us, Mija. He took away our home, our jobs. He killed your brother, Antonio. He's robbed us of everything. And that man won't be happy until he destroys the entire Lopez Fitzgerald family. Luis, he called me mama. Yeah, I, mama. I heard that. Isn't that the darndest thing, Bethy? Little Martin thinks Sheridan's his real mommy. That's it, baby. I'm here. Mama's here. Sheridan had accepted the fact that our baby died and that little Martin was the baby that I had with you. But... Well, unfortunately, it doesn't look that way now. <coughs> oh. That's it. Mama's here and she's never gonna leave you again. No, she's not. Oh, yes, my baby. <laughs> Why do you expect me to believe that Alistair Crane is such an evil man? How can you even think that, Paloma? Sheridan told me what he did to you all in Mexico. My God, he had you kidnapped. He used you as bait to lure Sheridan and Luis to their deaths. He almost killed all three of you and the Wheelers. I know. Luis told me that Mr. Crane was behind all that. But how do I know for sure? I never saw him down there. Maybe this is just what you all want me to believe. The same way you want me to believe, you missed me. Paloma, 
Mia. Alistair Crane. Es un monstruo. The man I met outside the house, the man you say was Alistair Crane, was nothing but kind to me. Kind? It's kind to fill a girl's head with lies about her family? Well, you say there are lies, but he said you are the liar. What else do you expect from the devil? He said he wanted to help me. That he hated seeing me taking advantage of a family that doesn't love me and never has. They're lies. They're all lies. Just calm down. That's right, take deep breaths. Deep breaths. Oh, shoot. What is this? What is this pain that I'm feeling? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know this is. Yeah. Yeah, this is just Braxton Hicks. That's what this is. This is false labor. That's right. Because it's too soon to go into labor. It's too soon. How could you do this with me? Well, how could you just jump into bed with Fox like this? I didn't just jump into bed with him. Oh, right. I'm sorry. It isn't a bed. Okay. Who are you to sit here and criticize me? I mean, let's not forget you're the one who forgot to mention that he was married before. No, that's ancient history. Oh, no, no, no. You had a wife running around in L.A.? No, stop that? changing the subject. The point is, until a few days ago, we were a couple. Yeah, but now we're brother and sister, Chad. No, that's not the point. No, that's exactly the point. No, the point is, how could you hook up with Fox so suddenly? Well, it wasn't that sudden. What? what was something going on before this? Huh? Or while we were still together? No, 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 Chad, come on. I've been in love with Whitney for a long time now. You know that. Well, she was in love with me. Fox, not you. Well, like she said, though, that was before she found out you were her half-brother, Chad. You can't be with her anymore, okay? It's over. You have no chance at a future together. Yeah, I know that. Well, then let it sink in, okay? She's got a right to move on with someone else. Yes, but not with you, she doesn't. Excuse me? I will not allow you to take advantage of Whitney in this way. You have absolutely no right to tell me who I can and cannot be with. The hell I don't. You are deliberately trying to hurt your brother. But what? But what? It's okay for him to destroy my life? It's okay for him to steal my job at Crane Industries? Hell, you're trying to help him. Crane Industries is as much a part of Chad's birthright as it is yours. Now, Whitney is not a piece of property. She was your brother's fiance when they were forced to break up. You moved in full steam ahead without regard for anyone else's feelings. That is not true, Julian. How could you do this, honey? You loved Chad. I'm your daughter, Mom. Why don't you try being on my side for a change? He's my son. I don't want either one of you to be hurt. Yeah, aren't you a little late for that? Now, you will stay away from Whitney. Like hell I will. You know, the entire time I've been in love with her, I never made a move. And I kept my distance. I acted like a perfect gentleman because I respected her relationship with Chad. I didn't try to break him up. I didn't even let her know how I felt about her. But you were playing her. That is not true, Chad, and you know it. Well, he was always around. Because we were all friends. If Teresa hadn't told me how he felt, I never would have known. Until the minute we broke up. Exactly, Chad, you broke up. Because you found out you were half-brother and sister, remember? You have been taking advantage of that because she is upset and she is vulnerable. You have been manipulating her. No, no, Julian, that's not true. I don't know how else you got here doing this because you just got over Chad and this is just not like you. Manipulating and taking advantage is your M.O., Dad, not mine. I didn't flash money in front of Whitney or fancy cars or fine jewelry. I didn't get her hooked on drugs so she'd sleep with me, and I didn't get her pregnant and then leave her once I'd had my fun. But you did. You did all that and more to Dr. Russell way back when. That's how this whole mess got started, and now here you are standing here, all these years later, still not taking responsibility. You're projecting your guilt onto me. Is... It's Psych 101, Dad. Except I'm not the user and abuser here. You are. Mm. I don't think Alistair Crane is a liar, Mama. I think you are. Hello, oh, Mama. You don't believe that. Yo te quiero con toda mi alma, más que a mi propia vida. Eso es mentira, Mama. Tú no me quieres y nunca me has querido. I do love you. I do. Let me prove it to you, please. Yeah, Mama, you already had your chance. 
You have shown me how you feel about me my whole life. Alistair Green has, has filled your head with lies. He's manipulating you. He's not the one who abandoned me. He's not the one who sent me away to live in Mexico with relatives. You did. We've been through this. Your father left us, Paloma. We had no money. I had to work day and night to just put food on the table and clothes on our back and a roof over our heads. Yes, yes, I know, Mama. Money was tight. Paloma. Mi angel. Please. I never, never wanted to send you to live with Tia Maria. But I could not afford to keep all my children. So you got rid of the baby. The one who ate the least, who needed the fewest clothes, who took up the least room. The one who would have been the cheapest to keep. Why, Mama? Why did you send me away and keep the others? Why me? That's right, just keep breathing. Hey. Well, all right, everything is just fine. Everything is fine. Okay. I can never let Ethan Gwen know that I'm having pains with this pregnancy. Whew. See if Gwen found out there was complications. She totally freak. Everything is fine. Okay. Well, I think I should take Martin to bed. He should have been asleep a while ago. No, 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 no. He can sleep late in the morning. Let Sheridan hold him for a little longer. But he already had his nighttime bottle, and he was in his crib halfway to dreamland before somebody brought him out here. Well, and I'm very glad I did, because he hasn't seen his daddy in a long, long time. And just look, look how cute he and Sheridan look together. <laughs> um, can I talk to you? What's going on? You said that... Sheridan was over this fixation that Martin was her son. Well, I thought so, okay? Beth, this is my worst nightmare. <sighs> Your worst nightmare? I'm telling you, Sheridan has been doing better, okay? She hasn't even mentioned the loss of the baby in a long time. Well, maybe because she hasn't seen Martin in a really long time. Well, maybe. But I'm telling you, she's been happy. Yeah, Antonio's death... Look, it hit her hard, okay, but she's bounced back. I mean, we had a wonderful commitment ceremony down in Mexico, okay? Yeah, I saw the DVD. And we have been planning a real wedding. Okay. Whatever the reason, she seems to have regressed. And, um, putting Sheridan aside for a minute, I'm worried about Martin's health. I'm sorry, but her behavior's got to be confusing him. Well, I agree. Okay. I just, I don't think that Sheridan should see Martin for a while, and at least till she's over this sick or unhealthy obsession. So if you want to see little Martin, I think you should just come by yourself. Come on. Sheridan? Sheridan, hey. Uh, honey, I think it's time that we go. You know, it's, 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 it's uh, past Saul Martin's bedtime, okay? No, no, I, I'm, I'm never gonna let him go. I'm never gonna leave him alone. Sheridan. Sheridan, you gotta give little Martin back now, okay? No. No, I don't. Sheridan. He... Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What are you upsetting her for, huh? She's not hurting him. I mean, little Martin looks content. I mean, look at him. He loves her. Just as if Sheridan were his real mommy. Hmm. Well, uh... A baby can never get too much love, you know. All the the books say it. The, the babies gravitate towards people who who give it to them, just like older people stay away from those who might hurt them. Is that a fact? Yep. And it's not like Martin thinks that Sheridan is his mother. Of course, he knows it's it's me. She's just someone giving him love, you know. Look, 
I'm sorry to put you through this, okay? You know, especially considering this isn't the first time that Sheridan's thought that little Martin has her baby. Just please, just don't get upset, okay? No, I'm fine, but I'm worried about Martin and Sheridan. She looks like she's ready to go over the edge again. I just don't understand it. it. Must be so devastating to lose a baby. I can't imagine losing little Martin. I guess that kind of thing never really goes away, you know? And when she sees a baby, any baby, probably just all comes right back to her. No, 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 that's the thing, though. It's not just any baby. It's just with little Martin. That's the only baby she has this connection to. I, I just wish I understood why. Uh, well, maybe it's my fault. What do you mean by that? Well, back when Martin was a newborn and I let Sheridan nurse him because I couldn't. Right. They say breastfeeding, it bonds a mother and a child. Something I wasn't able to experience. Something Sheridan was able to share with Martin. And in her fragile state of mind, you know, having lost her baby, she probably bonded so deeply with my son. And that's what this obsession with him is all about. Maybe. I wish I could have nursed him. You know, I feel like such a failure as a mother. Beth, you weren't a failure. But look, these things happen sometimes, okay? I'm sorry, I know how much that must have hurt you. More than you'll ever know. <sighs> oh, brother, gag me with a spoon. <sighs> but, you know, I just had to put my feelings aside and do what was right for our son. And you did. All right, you're completely selfless. And that's just one of the things that makes you such a wonderful mother. Well, thank you. Fox, let me have a look at this. Just get away from me, okay? But you're bleeding. I said I'm fine. You heard him. Get off of him. Are you okay? You know, I swear to God, if you weren't my father, what you think passes for one, I'd kill you for that. You will not talk to me like that. You will show respect for Eve and for your brother, and you will stop seeing Whitney. Go to hell. I love her, and nothing that you or you or you says is going to change that or make me stop seeing her. Whitney, why are you doing this? Honey, I know that you're devastated to find out that Chad is your brother, and I know your emotions are all in a turmoil, but how could you fall in love so soon? How could you fall in love with another man so soon? Why are you doing this? I can't let the whole world know that I'm pregnant with my brother's child. I have to sleep with Fox. I have to sleep with him so that I can pass this baby off as his. He's my only hope. You know, I made love to my brother. Do you have any idea how disgusting that makes me feel? I want to wipe away every memory of that that I can. Do you understand that? Yes. I understand that, sweetheart. But using Fox just because he's available? I know you think that's going to stop the hurt, but it's not. Well, you know what? You don't know anything. And I'm ready to move on with my life. And you can't stop me. But you're just using Fox so you can erase the memory of Chad. No, I'm not. I want to be with him. OK, then waiting a while won't change that. But if you don't, you are turning brother against brother, son against father. And that's not fair to anyone, especially not Fox. Dr. Russell, Whitney's old enough to know who she wants to be with, okay? So please, just back off. Oh, you guys, please just leave us alone, huh? We're gonna be together whether you like it or not, all of you. Oh, damn you, Fox. You sat back all this time pretending to be my best friend. But you were just waiting on the opening to move in on Whitney. And when you found it, you swooped in and took advantage of it. Have you listened to a single word that she said to you? Or a single word that I said to you, huh? I didn't take advantage of her. Or anyone else, Chad. She's not using me, okay? I love her, and I'm gonna be with her. No, you're not, Fox. What are you gonna do, huh? What, are you gonna hit me again? Go ahead, hit me. It's not gonna stop me from seeing Whitney. Get out of my house. Now. Estoy esperando, mamá. Why was I the only child you sent away? Why not Teresa or one of the boys? 
I thought... Ay, Paloma, I thought that since you were the youngest, hardly more than a baby, that you would have less memories of being with us, that it would be easier for you to adjust to a life of being raised by Tia Maria, to become part of her family, that you would go to a good private school in Mexico, something that I could not give you here. I wanted you... I wanted you to have the best, Paloma. I wanted you to have all the advantages I knew I could not afford to give you here. But none of that means that I didn't love you, not for a second. Then why didn't you bring me at least once for a visit? Or switch us around, I don't know, bring me to Harmony and send one of the others to Mexico? I'm, surely they would have benefited from, from getting to know your homeland and from getting to know Tia Maria and the rest of the family, from getting to practice their Spanish there. Okay, perhaps, yeah, perhaps they would have. Except that once, once you got comfortable living in Puerto Arena and living with Tia Maria, having friends, going to school, I just, I didn't want to tear you away from all of that. But I missed you so very much. Every day, for all those years, you have to believe that. Then why didn't you come to Puerto Arena? Didn't you think I wanted to? I couldn't afford it. In all these years, you couldn't once save up f for a plane ticket? It was more than just a plane ticket. It meant giving up a precious paychecks, Paloma. Plus hiring somebody to take care of your brothers and your sister. We barely got by, Paloma. Barely got by. <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding, Mama? Look at where you live. It, it I don't know house. how you call it in America, but we call it a mansion. You and Teresa have a bunch of maids, cooks, nannies, and you expect me to believe that in all these years you couldn't afford one lousy plane ticket to Mexico? Ay, mamá, por favor, how stupid you think I am? There we go. It's just like I thought. It's Braxton Hicks. All right. I can get back to Mom and Paloma now. Teresa? Yeah, it sounded like Teresa. Oh, Teresa! Oh, Mama. Teresa, mira que te pasa. Teresa, ¿estás bien? What's the matter, mijo? What's the matter, mijo? Oh, God, Mama. Oh, God, is something wrong with the babies? Teresa? It's okay, it's okay, Mama. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Look, I told you, I'm just, I'm just having a twinge. But it, look, it's going away. It's already going away. It is. No, no, nobody screams like that. I'm just sit. a twinge. Look, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know what? I'm going to call out Dr. Russell. I want you to be checked out. No, yes. no, please. You don't have to call Dr. Russell. Look, I'm, I'm totally fine. It, it was just, uh, it was Braxton Hicks. That's all it was. Okay. I mean, I mean, I had them when I was pregnant with little Ethan, and and surely you had them when you were pregnant, right? So I it, did, Teresa, they're but... just scary when they sneak up on you. That's all. I'm totally fine. Whew. I am. So you really think I'm a wonderful mother, Luis? Yeah, yeah, I do. That means so much to me. Well, I, I really want to thank you for being so understanding with what Sheridan is going through as well. I mean, it can't be easy having another woman think that your baby is hers, you know? No, it's not. I'll admit, it did throw me when he called her mama, but, well, What's important right now is Sheridan, and she must be in such emotional pain. I don't want to risk upsetting her anymore. You and that baby look so perfect together. <laughs> like Lucy and little Ricky. Oh, no. Like Madonna and child. Thank you. <laughs> My little guy is pretty amazing, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> Oh, he's just so handsome, so cuddly, and so well-behaved. 
He did it. The baby's here. Thank oh. you, God. Come on, little no. baby. Oh. oh, my baby, please. Let me hold my baby. It's not your baby. Not anymore. It's okay. It's all right. You're back in mommy's arms. Mommy loves you so much. Now hand the baby over right now or you both die. Please be uh, gentle. Yeah, you yeah, know, whatever. <laughs> Say goodbye, Shir Shir, because you're never going to lay eyes on your baby again. Stop her! Somebody stop her before she kills my baby! My baby. My baby. Julian, you can't mean that. I mean, you can't throw Fox out of the house. He's your son. I mean it. And you are out of Crane Industries, effective immediately. Julian, no. I will not have you undermining your brother like this. He's my half-brother. Listen, I saw a future of my two sons side by side at Crane, but I can see that you two will never work together. So you're going to choose him over me? No. You made the choice. You live with the consequences. Julian. I gave him every perk, every advantage, and this is how he thanks me, by stabbing his brother in the back. Uh, Julian, this is getting way out of control. I didn't mean to come between you and Fox. He only has himself to blame. Okay, but don't, don't kick him out of the house because of me. Just, just stay out of this, okay? I don't need my father's bastard son fighting my battles for me. I do just fine on my own. You want to choose Chad over me? Fine. You go ahead. I'm out of here. Well, no, no, no. Fox, you can't leave. This is your home. Not anymore, it's not. Julian, Julian, please don't punish him. Don't punish Fox because of me. It's not because of you. It's because he's a greedy, selfish young man. I've given him everything. But apparently it wasn't enough. He had to steal from his own brother. Let me tell you something. Contrary to Crane belief, you can't own someone, Dad. Whitney doesn't belong to Chad. She's a human being. She's got a little thing called free will. Maybe you heard of this before? No matter how much she wanted to be with him before, that's impossible now. They're half-brother and sister, for God's sake. Remember Boston, sex, drugs, and all that jazz? Watch you your mouth! You want to choose Chad over me? You go ahead. You know what? You can have him. Have fun. I'm going to let him know firsthand what a lousy father you really are. How sharper than a serpent's tooth. You ungrateful? What exactly should I be grateful for, Dad? Huh? Do you expect me to be grateful for the fact that you treated my mother like complete crap the entire time you were married to her? The fact that you shipped me off to boarding schools as soon as I was old enough for them to take me, or the fact that you never once came to visit? You never invited me home for holidays? Is that what you want me to be grateful for? You had wonderful vacations all over the world. You were skiing and stud safaris in Kenya, sailing the Mediterranean, tagging along with the other kids' parents. Did it ever occur to you that I would have given all that up in a second for just one hug from you, one hug from you? You could have taken me to one ball game, Dad. But that's not the Crane way, is it? Huh? You think you had it tough, Chad, growing up as an orphan? Well, I grew up like an orphan. Except I got to see my parents. I got to see my parents in the newspaper. I got daily reminders every single day that my father would choose any business meeting or any fundraiser or any social gathering over me. And then he forced my mom to go along with it. Oh, yes, your mom. Your mother was no saint. She let me think Ethan was my son. She let me raise him as a crane rather than let it be known that she was pregnant by Sam Bennett. You want to let me know what the hell that has to do with anything that we're talking about here? Huh? You didn't know back then. And whoever Ethan's father was, I was still your son, Dad. My sisters were still your daughters. But then let's be honest here. You really don't care about anyone other than for what you can use them for. Isn't that right? Wild animals have more parental instincts than you. That's enough. Good luck, bro. Have fun being a crane as long as you're in favor, but just make no mistake. This man doesn't care any more about you than he does me. He's just being nice to you to get to Dr. Russell. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? Chad, do yourself a favor, man. Do not be fooled by him. He's gonna use his love of you to get to her. Shut up. What are you gonna do, huh? Are you gonna sucker punch me again? Go ahead, I'm in the mood now. You got me fired up. That's it. Get out and stay out. 
You are no son of mine. Well, given this family's history, I wouldn't be surprised if you're right. All right, I'm just gonna finish putting photos of little Ethan in this book. No, it's not okay. You need to lie down, okay? No, I actually, I don't need to lie down, Ethan. You know what I need? Is a nice warm glass of milk. When could you get it for me, please? Yeah, Teresa, but then we're gonna take you to the hospital to get checked out. Okay, that's ridiculous. No, it's not. Teresa, we're talking about my babies and your health here, and I am not taking any chances. Okay, I really don't feel like going out to the hospital. So, um, you know what? Can we just stop this right now? This can't be my baby. My baby died. She's Jordan. just as handsome as you are. Jordan. You're right. I got carried away again, didn't I? Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I thought little Martin was my baby. You look just like him. Sheridan, you said you didn't know if your baby was a boy or a girl, remember? Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, he or, or she was taken away from me before I could find out. Same eyes, same little hands, same smell. But you can't be my baby. My baby's dead. Sharon, we're gonna have another baby. Maybe three or four, okay? We're gonna build our own family together. But we'll never forget the one that we lost. No. No, the... The baby will always be in our hearts. Okay, okay. Um, Martin's had a long day. I should really put him to bed. Hmm. Hey, it's past his bedtime. Sure, come on. Give little Martin the bath, okay? Okay. That's good. Over me. Maybe I'm, I'm going crazy again. Hey, don't even say that, okay? I just wish I knew what it was about little Martin that makes me think that he's mine. Oh, well, that is a no-brainer. He is yours. My wacko daughter's stolen from you. Well, maybe it's because of that special bond you created when, when you nursed him. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Sheridan, you were in a fragile state. You just lost your baby. It's okay. I understand. And oh, I will never forget what a great gift you gave Martin back then. I think we should uh, go now. Yeah. Hey, um, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't know bringing you here and seeing little Martin was going to make you so upset. You couldn't have. I, I didn't even know. Good night, Beth. Mrs. Wallace. Baby. Thanks for being so understanding. Well, I feel for Sheridan. Having lost her baby, going in and out of these severe depressions, it's yeah. got to be too much to bear for you, too. Who knows if she'll, she'll ever get well again. Well, anyway, we kiss Martin goodnight. Hey. Hi, Hi. <laughs> Love you.
I'm so the way that Sherry Moore's looking at little Martin. She knows deep down in her soul that he is her flesh and blood, hers and Louise's. And pretty soon, the truth is gonna come bubbling up to the surface, and when it does, she's gonna take little Martin away from you, Missy. <laughs> All you're sucking up to Louise is not gonna mean squat, and he's gonna hate you for the rest of his life. <laughs> Shut up, old woman. Sheridan is gonna have Louise and their son, and you are gonna have nothing, absolutely nothing, except explaining it to the judge. <laughs> oh, my God. Fox has been kicked out of the mansion and the crane business because of me. Whitney, it's his own doing. Julian's right, honey. You can't blame yourself. Well, no. Actually, you're right about that because you're the one to blame for all this. You're the one responsible for everything that's happened. If you hadn't have been such a tramp, if you hadn't have gotten pregnant all those years ago and lied about it, none of us would be going through the pain we're going through right now. Do you understand that? No, when you stop blaming your mother for everything. Teresa, those babies are the most important things in the world to me. I would never get over it if something happened to them. Look, Gwen, nothing is going to happen to these two babies, okay? It was just a little cramping. Now, Dr. Russell said expect more of that with twins. That's all. I would still really feel a lot better if we just got you checked out, okay? You know, I would actually feel better if you could just get me that glass of milk and then you just leave me... Oh, oh what? God, what? Oh, what's happening? Oh Mia? Teresa, oh my what is it? Oh, Mom, I'm bleeding. Oh, oh my Lisa. God! Oh my God, Ow. even our babies! Ow. You told Chad, didn't you? I'm not gonna tell Chad, not ever. Why was I the only one you felt you could live with them? These are my babies, okay? If they're born right now, they might not make it. Oh, the patient's blood pressure is skyrocketing. God, I was afraid of that. This Tuesday, the wait is over. The first weight loss competition. The next three days are going to be hell. 12 contestants. Oh! Over 3,000 pounds. Way to cave in and eat a cupcake. And with a quarter of a million dollars on the line. Not even gonna get here! The bigger they are. Down, down, move it. The harder they'll fall. I'm gonna die! The Biggest Loser, NBC Tuesday, 8, 7 central.